information we're putting into our the committee will come to order today the committee will consider legislation to reauthorize and improve the federal financial assistance management improvement act of 1999 we also have several commemoratives and postal naming bills to consider S-303, the committee's first agenda item today is S-303, the Federal Financial Assistance Management Improvement Act of 2009. This bill reauthorizes and improves the website grants.gov. This website provides a central location for grant applicants to, re to search and to apply for federal grants, as well as to submit the necessary financial reports. The federal government offers over 1,000 federal grant programs administered by two dozen different agencies. In the past, each agency and sometimes each grant had its own application process and reporting requirements. This created a necessary red tape for state, local, and tribal governments, nonprofit groups, and other entities seeking federal grants. Grants.gov provides a one-stop shop for grant recipients, allowing them to focus on serving the public instead of wasting time on paperwork. The programs available through grants.gov cover such areas as community development, education, job training, disaster relief, scientific research, and many other worthy efforts. In addition to reauthorizing grants.gov, S-303 directs the Office of Management and Budget to improve the administration of federal grants and to submit reports to Congress on its progress. This is a good bill, and I urge my colleagues to join me in supporting it. I now yield to the ranking member, the gentleman from California, uh, for his opening statement. I thank the chairman. I thank you for uh, holding a timely markup on the reauthorization. Uh, Senate Bill 303, which reauthorizes the uh, Federal Financial Assistance Management Act of 1999 comes to us as a small but necessary reauthorization. Uh, as jointly agreed with the Chairman and myself, uh, we will be offering a manager's amendment, uh, which is substantially the language of H.R. 2392. This will, in fact, begin on, in this particular area, in the grant area, to make into law what the Chairman and I have worked on, which is transparency through the use of XBRL and other technologies that allow for the public to have full and unfettered access to the material which is rightfully theirs, but which before this time was often requested through FOIA and ultimately granted in a form that made it very hard to search. If accepted by the Senate when this bill goes back, we will, in fact, have moved a long way toward public transparency, in this case, in the grant area, an area in which both the, those applying for grants and, quite candidly, those who feel that they should have gotten them, that should have, in fact, competed successfully, will have an opportunity to look. Additionally, the public will be able to, rightfully so, ask, is the grant process open and fair? And watchdog groups will be able to say, was it properly awarded? So, Mr. Chairman, I look forward to this being moved on a bipartisan basis. Thank the Chairman for uh, his assistance in this and yield back the balance of my time. I thank the gentleman from California for his statement. Any other members seeking recognition? I now call up Senate Bill 303. S-303, an act to reauthorize and improve the Federal Financial Assistance I ask unanimous consent that the bill be considered as read and open for amendment at any point. Without objections, so ordered. I now, I now recognize myself for an amendment which is at the desk. The clerk would designate the amendment. Amendment in the nature of a substitute to S-303 offered by Mr. Towns of New York. I ask unanimous Mr. consent Eisen. that the amendment be considered as read and open uh, at any point. Um, the clerk, uh, let me just move without objection, the amendment is considered as read. I ask unanimous consent that the Towns and ISA amendment in the nature of a substitute be considered as base text for the purpose of any additional amendments to this bill. Without objection, so ordered. The substitute amendment makes a number of important technical changes 
to the bill. It incorporates the provisions of H.R. 2392, the Government's Information Transparency Act, which this committee reported favorably by voice vote on June the 4th, 2009. I was happy to co-sponsor this bill along with the ranking member, Congressman Issa. This legislation will help address a number of concerns that the committee raised in March of this year in oversight hearings by the Subcommittee on Domestic Policy and by the full committee. The amendment directs the Office of Management and Budget to adopt a single data standards for collection, analysis and dissemination of business and financial information. The standard must be common across all federal agencies and make the data widely available to the public. It must also be consistent with the federal financial accounting standards and industry best practices. And it must be able to be updated as technolo technology changes in the future. This standard also must be applied to the data on federal grants. Additionally, the amendment directs the Office of Management and Budget to ensure that the grants.gov website is available to grant applicants using any computer platform. This is in response to an instance of what happened a few years ago in which the application system was not available to applicants using Mac or Link. This amendment will make federal financial information much more accessible to the public, improving the transparency of this data and allowing the public to analyze it more easily. It will also improve the availability and interoperability of financial data reported to the government by the private sector. I encourage all of the members to support uh, this amendment, and I yield to the ranking member for five minutes for any comments he may have on the amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And again, thank you for your willingness to work together on a bipartisan effort to include the language from H.R. 2392 as the manager's amendment. Mr. Chairman, as I think this committee knows very well, that which we disagree about, that which is uh, controversial, is loud. It's loud publicly and it's loud sometimes here. But that which is most important often is done silently or quietly. Today, in a quiet markup with your leadership, we are in fact moving the Federal Government to standardization of collection, analysis, and dissemination of business and financial information, regardless of the business activities that companies are involved in, and providing a single data standard. Mr. Chairman, few will note today as, in fact, such an important day. But for those who wish to have transparency in government, for those who have been frustrated, whether they are using Macs or Linux or other data uh, platforms, computer platforms, to know that because of what we do here today and what we do following all the way through to the signature of the President, Mr. Chairman, you are creating transparency in government. You are creating the opportunity for citizens around the United States to analyze, if you will, to look over our shoulder and for them to quietly decide where the flaws are in government, where there can be improvements, and allow them to make accurate and timely recommendations for improvements. Mr. Chairman, two weeks ago or a week ago, we had a fairly loud hearing on some of the problems that government is having uh, dealing with uh, the uh, uh, recovery.gov uh, website. It wasn't a quiet hearing, but it was a good hearing, and it told us that, in fact, when the public has access to information, they find the errors, they bring them to us, and they will be fixed and are being fixed as we speak. Your leadership in this area will mean that for the remainder of this President's administration and those to follow, government will be more transparent and more accountable. I thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is a very special thing you do here today in the quiet of the morning and yield back. Th thank you, gentlemen, very much for his um, uh, kind words. Uh, are there any other speakers? Any other additional amendments? We will now uh, uh, actually, the, if there's no additional amendments, we now will be, be in order to move the town's ISA substitute. Are there any further amendments? Are there any additional amendments? Hearing no additional amendments, the question is on the adopting the town's ISA amendment in the nature of a substitute. 
All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? In the opinion of the chair, the ayes have it, and the amendment is agreed to. I now move that the Committee on Oversight and Government Reform report S-303 as amended to the House with the recommendation that the bill do pass. The question is on favor of reporting S-303 as amended to the House. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? In the opinion of the Chair, the ayes have it. The motion is agreed to and Senate 303 is ordered reported. Now we have the naming of several postal uh, and resolutions. The next order of business will be resolutions and postal naming bills. I ask unanimous consent that these resolutions and bills be considered in block and read and open to amendment at any time. These resolutions and postal naming bills include H. Res. 708, introduced by Representative Aaron Schock of Illinois. It congratulates Nancy Goodman Brinker for receiving the Presidential Medal of Freedom. H. Res. 779, introduced by Representative Judy Biggert of Illinois, recognizing and supports the goal and ideals of National Runaway Prevention Month. I have a manager's amendment at the desk updating this bill, and I ask unanimous consent that it be adopted and considered as the base text without objection, so ordered. H. Res. 942, re introduced by Representative Jim Matheson of Utah, commends the Real Salt Lake Soccer Club for winning the 2009 Major League Soccer Cup. H. Conrez 158, introduced by Representative Bob Etheridge of North Carolina, expresses support for the designation of an early detection month for breast cancer and all forms of cancer. H. Conrez 160, introduced by Representative David Price of North Carolina. This measure recognizes the contributions of the American Kennel Club. I have a manager's amendment at the desk updating this bill, and I ask unanimous consent that it be adopted and considered as the base text without, without objection, so ordered. H.R. 4095, introduced by Representative Dennis Moore of Kansas, designates a facility of the United States Postal Service in Overland Park, Kansas as the Congresswoman Jan Myers Post Office Building. H.R. 4139, introduced by Representative Greg Harper of Mississippi, designates a facility of the United States Postal Service in Hickory, Mississippi, as a Sergeant Matthew L. Ingram Post Office. Having satisfied the committee's criteria, each of these measures are worthy of support, and I therefore urge their adoption. Does the ranking member uh, have any comments on these bills or suggestions? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We have received and reviewed these postal namings and resolutions and find they meet the requirements of the committee. Additionally and briefly, I would like to comment on only one of them, HRES 708, recognizing uh, and congratulating Nancy Goodman Brinker for receiving the Presidential Medal of Freedom. As you may not know, this, is, in fact, is long overdue for the work that Ambassador Brinker has done. For back in 1980, when she founded the Susan G. Coleman Race for the Cure, in fact, a small and at that time grassroots organization designed to bring greater awareness to breast cancer, she did so with little fanfare and did so in the name of her deceased sister, who, in fact, had we had self-examinations, had we had the level of awareness that we have here in America today, would not have died. Since that time, her efforts, her dedication has led to over $1.3 billion in raised funds for our research, health services, and education since the founding uh, officially in 1982. So I, for one, in addition to all of these namings, want to point out that this is a long overdue effort, and I would like to thank Mr. Schock for bringing uh, this bill to, uh, to the floor in a timely fashion, and I thank the uh, Chairman and yield back. I would like to thank the Ranking Member for his uh, statement. Do any other members seek recognition? 
Mr. Shock. Yeah, Mr. Shock, gentlemen, Illinois. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would just, um, uh, our ranking member Isa did a nice job of laying out the purpose of this, and I uh, just say it's my, been my privilege to represent Peoria, Illinois, where uh, Ms. Brinker is hailed from, where uh, her sister Susie Coleman uh, lived, and uh, where the Susan G. Coleman uh, Center started. And um, um, I think, based on uh, her life's history, what she's done and continues to do, uh, recently recognized by the President with the um, Medal of Freedom. Uh, the least we can do is, is uh, add our accolades to um, her good work and especially uh, last month with the um, um, uh, record work of the um, breast cancer awareness um, that it couldn't come at a better time. So I appreciate Mr. Chairman and Ranking Member Issa your um, uh, allowing this to come forward. And um, I appreciate the broad basis support that the resolution has, has received. And um, I know that Ms. Brinker and her family are very grateful for the recognition. I yield back. Thank you, gentlemen, for a statement. I ask unanimous consent that the measures previously described be reported favorably by the committee without objections. So ordered. This concludes our business for today. I ask you. Gentlewoman from California, secret recognition. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I was wondering when and if it would be appropriate for us to attempt to streamline the process by which many of these bills are taken up on the floor and do them in block, in block like we have just done here in committee. Um, I don't know about my colleagues, but I think that we spend a lot of time on the floor voting um, post office by post office when our time could be better spent in committee uh, debating very important issues. So I don't know if that's appropriate to take up at this point. Uh, no, it's, well, actually, it's a rules committee, so uh, we would have to. Uh, and uh, I want you to know I agree with you. <laughs> but, uh, but the point is that that's the rules committee would have to be, uh, 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 that would be a decision that they would have to make. You know? But if you need somebody to help you argue the point, I mean, uh, you can count on me. Uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Uh, the gentlelady is is right that often it takes quite a bit of time, and uh, as before I sat in the ranking uh, position, one of the things that I found worked very well, and perhaps you'll be the uh, the, the majority's person on the next markup or the next uh, time on the floor, is if there are no significant speakers, the truth is that the two people controlling the time on the floor can reduce each one to less than a minute if they choose to by simply having it called up, saying uh, we move, move support, have no speakers. The minority does the same. And it is something where it's very good to look at that statement and have it just put in the record uh, if there are no speakers. I'm certain, for example, on uh, Aaron Schock's bill that we will fill the time with people who want to speak about the importance of breast cancer research and awareness. So that would be an example where I doubt that the people managing on the floor would fail to fill the time. But it is something where the chairman and I often uh, delegate that, and you very much would be in control of cutting that time down to just a minute per. And, and I agree with the chairman that often that's the best thing to do if there are no significant speakers. So thank the chairman for his, uh, his words on that. Thank, thank you very much. Um, any other members seeking recognition? Well, this concludes our business for the day. I ask unanimous consent that the staff be authorized to make technical and conforming changes to all matters ordered and reported. With, without objection, so ordered, the committee stands adjourned.